Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, most gracious, most merciful. Alhamdulillahi wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of them and every one of us. And may Allah grant us goodness and give us forgiveness during this beautiful month. Brothers and sisters, we are going through supplications and dua through the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the reason is every one of us has our needs. It's important for us to look at how the blessed, those who were granted blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, confirmed blessings such as prophethood were addressing this matter. How they called out to Allah, the words they used, what happened as a result. I'd like to move today to Nuh alayhi salatu was salam at a certain point in his life, the du'as that he made, you and I know that he called out against his people after so many years. Thereafter, Allah instructed him to do something that was to build the ark and that was to take the people with him and whatever other uh, uh, creatures Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to be in the ark with him. But something interesting is when he got onto that ark, he thanked Allah. Many of us, we call out to Allah. When Allah does that for us, we forget to thank Him. I spoke about how important it is to follow up the dua with obedience. Now we're talking about you having received what you asked from Allah. What do you do? Let's look at this beautiful verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, in Surah Al-Mu'minun, فَإِذَا اسْتَوَيْتَ أَنْتَ وَمَنْ مَعَكَ عَلَى الْفُلْكِ فَقُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي نَجَّانَا مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ When you, O Noah, and your people get onto the ark, say all praise is due to Allah who has saved us from the people who are oppressive. Wow. Allah is saying, once you achieve what you have asked for, we want you to call out to us by saying, Alhamdulillahi alladhi najjana min al zalimin All praise is due to Allah who has saved us from the people who are oppressive. And then we want you to continue. وَقُلْ رَبِّ أَنزِلْنِي مُنْزَلًا مُبَارَكًا وَأَنْتَ خَيْرُ الْمُنْزِلِينَ Say, O our Rabb, grant us the best of landings. Let the landing be a blessed landing. Just picture this for a moment. You have a flood, you have a, 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 an ark that is moving in the water. It has to land somewhere. Where is it going to land? O oh Allah, let it be a blessed landing. Let this landing be a blessed landing, for indeed you are the best of those who cause a beautiful landing. Amazing dua. Amazing dua that is uh, mentioned here in the Quran in Surah Al Mu'minun, and this is verse number 29. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us that when you have asked Him for something, follow it up. Uh, many times people ask Allah, when they get, they forget Allah. Subhanallah. We ask Allah for cure when He cured us, no more salah. We asked Allah for a job, we got the job, we're out in the pubs and clubs, astaghfirullah. Uh, this shouldn't be the case. We should be those who are more obedient. We, we're reminded to be grateful to Allah. And this is why uh, something that lasted a very, very long time, to this day, we call out with these supplications. Do you know what they are? Whenever we uh, sit in a motor vehicle, ready to go on a journey, on a train, uh, a bicycle, uh, the back of an animal, uh, aircraft. There is a dua that we make. Do you know that dua is in the Quran? It is a supplication from the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says He has created the animals. Uh, some of them are in order to ride. Uh, some of them are in order to consume, etc. And then there is a verse in Surah Al-Zukhruf, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لِتَسْتَوُوا عَلَىٰ ظُهُورِهِ ثُمَّ تَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ رَبِّكُمْ إِذَا اسْتَوَيْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ وَتَقُولُوا Allah blessed you with all these animals so that when you ride, when you sit on the back of that animal, 
and you are now ready to actually go forth in order to start your journey, you need to remember the favor of Allah. A lot of us don't do that. You know, you jump into your car, you just say the dua without remembering the favor of Allah. Imagine you did not have the car. Imagine you did not have the mode of transport. Imagine you did not have the donkey to ride. Imagine you did not have the aircraft to fly. That is the favor that you are supposed to be remembering. Allah says, تَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ رَبِّكُمْ إِذَا اسْتَوَيْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ وَتَقُولُوا You should all remember the favor of Allah once you're sitting on your mode of transport. That should make you say the following. سُبْحَانَ الَّذِي سَخَّرَ لَنَا هَذَا وَمَا كُنَّا لَهُ مُقْرِنِينَ وَإِنَّا إِلَىٰ رَبِّنَا لَمُنْقَلِبُونَ Subhanallah, glory be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has made this or facilitated this mode of transport for us. Subhanallah. We are praising Allah, we are declaring His greatness for having facilitated this mode of transport for us. Look at how this dua was meant to be right up to the end of time because Allah says, Sakhara lana hadha. He didn't say this animal, uh, this ship, this car, uh, this, because then it would, have been, uh, uh, it would have been inapplicable if we were to be on, an, on for example, a Concorde or a spaceship uh, or a drone, for example. But here Allah is telling us clearly, We praise Allah who has facilitated this for us. This, whatever mode of transport we're on right now. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it. Yet we were unable to control it. We were unable, you know, we're not in control of this, this thing here. It's Allah. And then the second part of the dua is to remind you that your ultimate journey is another one. Allahu Akbar. Have you ever thought of that? When you are making a dua, when, as you are embarking on a journey, you're saying, Oh Allah, I thank you for giving me this mode of transport, but I want to reiterate that my real journey is to you. Allahu Akbar. It means ultimately, I'm moving through this world in a way that I'm going to end up passing away and getting to you. Wa inna, all of us, ila rabbina, to our rabb, lamun qalibun, are going to return. So we want to bear witness that while we are happy that this journey is being facilitated by you through this mode of transport, O Allah, we confirm that we belong to you, we're going to be returning to you. That might just be your last journey. So many people have passed away on journeys, accidents. So many, may Allah grant them jannatul firdaus and make it easy. But don't we think for a moment that the dua is so powerful, reminding us that while we're on this small journey, the bigger journey is actually unto Allah. Subhanallah. The day that happens, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. May Allah grant us paradise. May Allah open our doors. My brothers and sisters, this is an amazing dua. It's amazing because look at how it's so fresh on our tongues and the tongues of our children. Subhanallah, sakhara lana hadha wa ma kunna lahu muqarinin wa inna ila rabbina lamun qalibun. I want to actually make mention of a hadith in Sahih Muslim uh, narrated by Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma. He says the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says when, when he used to uh, ride upon his mode of transport and he's going out, he used to say Allahu Akbar three times. Then he used to read this dua that I've just read now from the Quran. Subhana alladhi sakhala lana hadha wa ma kunna lahu muqrineen wa inna ila rabbina lamunqalibun. And then he used to say Allahumma inna nas'aluka fi safarina hadha albirra wa taqwa Oh Allah, we ask you in this journey of ours, that you grant us righteousness and God consciousness. We're asking you on this journey to grant us righteousness and God consciousness. And you make us do deeds that will please you alone. Allahumma hawwin alayna safarana hadha. Oh Allah, make easy for us this journey of ours. 
and crumple the distance of the journey for us. That means make it short. You know, sometimes you have a long journey ahead of you, five hours, six hours, and it feels like it was just 30 minutes, an hour. That was Allah crumpling it for you. He crumpled the journey for you, subhanAllah. So He made the distance shorter. Whereas in real life, it was the same distance, but it seemed that way. So we're making a dua, O oh Allah, grant us consciousness of you, grant us righteousness, make us do good deeds while we're on the journey. And O oh Allah, make this journey easy for us and crumple the distance for us. Allahumma anta sahibu fi safar. O oh Allah, you are the companion, the ultimate companion on the journey. Subhanallah, I always tell people, when you're going to use your audio device, video device on your journeys, be it an aircraft, be it a, 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 a vehicle, make sure it is something very beneficial because you may die in that condition, in that state. You may return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't use it in the disobedience of Allah. Rather listen to the Quran, listen to something beneficial, the melodious recital of the word of Allah. What better way can there be to pass away while you were listening to the words of Allah? I recall many years ago when I was living in Medina Munawwara, there was a brother who passed away in a motor vehicle accident. His car was written off, but you know what? The audio cassette device was still playing with the words of Allah. Beautiful recital of the Quran. The man had passed away, the car was a wreck, everything was destroyed completely. May Allah give him Jannah. But in my heart, I said, This is a good death. It's a good ending. You've ended. May Allah grant us all a good ending in a way that you were listening to the Quran. It could have been anything else, something dirty. I mean, if it was an aircraft and we were watching a video, it could have been something that we would not be proud about. And that's your last moment, imagine. So when you're on a journey, it's even more important to ensure that you are being obedient. Hence the importance of this dua, O oh Allah. Why did the Prophet ﷺ repeat, O oh Allah, give me righteousness, God consciousness, make me do good deeds, make it easy for me, make the journey easy for me. O oh Allah, you are the best companion on a journey. It's so tempting sometimes to do things wrong or to cut corners and shortcuts, but O oh Allah, you remain with me. And the dua continues, Well, Khalifa to fil Ahl. O oh Allah, you are the best whom could, who could be left behind with the family to, to take care of my family. You know, the one whom I've left behind with my family, you're the best. You are the best companion in my journey. You are the best whom I've left behind with my family as well. Which means, oh Allah, while I'm out, take care of my family. Take care of my loved ones. I'm out, whether you're at work, whether you're gone out for whatever else it was. Some people go for Hajj, Umrah, they worry about their little babies that they're going to be leaving behind. May Allah make it easy for you. Uh, I had a brother who was asking me, he says, I've been accredited for the Hajj. Uh, I have a little baby. Should I go? Shouldn't I go? I said, brother, pause for a moment. You know, Hajar alayhi salatu was salam. Uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam left his baby. As a result, Allah granted them sustenance. Because that was for the obedience of Allah. It's different if you're going on holiday leaving your baby. I would not recommend that at all. It's different if you were going for something not necessary, not important, and you left your family members behind. But here, you're going to fulfill a pillar of Islam. You have a six-month-old, nine, one-year-old. Well, that's exactly the same type of baby who was left by Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. And Hajar alayhi salatu was salam was alone. And in fact, she had left him as well. Allah provided sustenance and water for him in a way that that became known as the city of Mecca. Amazing. So don't leave what Allah has instructed you to do simply because you have children. He may take you away. When Allah takes you away, He does not consider the fact that you have or don't have children. Remember that. Your time is up, your time is up. What will happen to those children? The same that happened to Muhammad sallallahu the same that happened to everyone else who were orphans. They were taken care of sometimes better than you could have taken care of them. I know of a poor man who left and he passed away. Uh, his children were looked after by a wealthy family, subhanAllah, even better than he would have been able to do if he were there. So Allah has taken care of them. Allah put them in the world in the first place. So he will take care of them. Look at this beautiful dua. Well, Khalifa to fil ahl. Oh Allah, we leave you with our family as well to take care of them. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min wa'atha is safar. Or you could say, Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min wa'atha is safar. Oh Allah, we seek protection from you, from the hardship, the difficulty of journeys, of this journey. Ka'abatil mandar, that which is not good for the eyes to see. 
وَسُوءِ الْمُنْقَلَبِ فِي الْمَالِ وَالْأَهْلِ And a bad outcome. We seek protection in you from uh, a bad journey, uh, the difficulties and hardship of journeys, uh, the, uh, that which is not soothing to the eyes, you know. It includes so many things. And uh, a bad ending of our wealth and our family members, uh, uh, something bad that may happen to them. We seek protection in you. You have to trust. You have to take risks, my brothers and sisters. You have to leave things. It doesn't mean that I need to stay with my family in order uh, for, for me to ensure that they're okay when I know I have to go to work and come back. Yes, if there is a danger that you know about, then definitely you have to take care of them as best as you can. Still, you might have to go out to get something and you make a dua while you're going out. Oh Allah, you take care of them. Ultimately, it's Allah. So look at how powerful this dua is. And look at how beautiful this dua uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us. Such a blessed dua. I want to repeat this beautiful dua in the Arabic language. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Allahumma inna nas'aluka fi safarina hadha al-birra wa taqwa wa min al-amali ma tarda. Allahumma hawwin alayna safarana hadha wa tu'i'anna bu'dah. Allahumma anta al-sahibu fi safar wa al-khalifatu fi al-ahl. اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من وعثاء السفر وكآبة المنظر وسوء المنقلب في المال والأهل. So we we diverted and went into the Sunnah du'a because of Munuh عليه الصلاة والسلام having been instructed to make the du'a as well when he was on that particular journey of the ark. And another one, Nuh عليه الصلاة والسلام. used a different wording for the same purpose. And Allah makes mention of this in Surah Hud. وَقَالَ رُكَبُوا فِيهَا بِسْمِ اللَّهِ مَجْرِهَا وَمُرْسَاهَا إِنَّ رَبِّي لَغَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ Allah says, or He said, He said, Ride in it. Ride in what? Ride in the ark. Bismillah. In the name of Allah. Majreha wa mursaha. Those of you who speak the Arabic language who might have come across this dua, notice the majre. Re is generally not uh, an Arabic dialect of uh, the proper uh, eloquent Arabic, the classical Arabic. Rather, it is more of a colloquial dialect but in the Quran here Allah wants us to say it that way in order to express the precise way it was said so bismillahi majreha wa mursaha we are in the name of Allah we start the journey we will end the journey that's one translation in the name of Allah who is going to send or who is going to take control of this uh, mode of transport and who is going to send the wind in order to be able to move it. And this was in the case of an ark. But generally, the one who is in control, the one who is making it move and who shall make it stop. So uh, if it's an animal, for example, Allah makes it move and Allah makes it stop. If it's a car, Allah makes it move. Allah makes it stop. A few years ago, when the auto cruise you know, uh, uh, defects happened and vehicles were not stopping, I remembered this dua, I said, wow, subhanAllah, it's Allah who actually starts it and stops it. Most of the time, He gives us the energy to put a, a, a foot on a pedal. But if He wants, that pedal won't work. Ask, read the stories online about the times when pedals have not worked. People are pressing the brake and the car is not stopping. What do you do? It's very scary. So that's why, Bismillahi majreha wa mursaha. Inna rabbi la ghafoorur rahim. Indeed, my Rabb is most forgiving, most merciful. Indeed, my Lord is most forgiving, most merciful. So that is a beautiful dua that is made. Now, I want to show you the result of the dua. Many times we make a dua, Oh Allah, grant me a blessed journey, make it easy for me, uh, you know, let it start in a nice way, let it end in a nice way, and so on. We've seen all these duas. The, the, the blessings achieved from the dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as a result of His dua to us, We called out to him, Ya Nuhu bitu bisalamim minna. O Nuh, we want you to land in peace from us. When you land, nobody's going to harm you. All those who were harming you before will no longer be. And everything is going to be calm and easy and everything is yours. Whatever you asked for, you've been given. 
Imagine he made a dua to say, Oh Allah, let me land in a nice way. Do you remember that dua we spoke about earlier in this session? Rabbi anzilni munzalan mubarakan wa anta khayrul munzilin. Oh Allah, grant me a good landing. You are the best of those who cause landing. So Allah says, we called out to him, we told him, O Nuh, land in a beautiful peace from us. Wa barakatin alayk. And we want you to achieve, to receive the peace, the blessings that we are sending on you. Subhanallah. Nuh alayhi salam called out to Allah, asking him to make his journey easy and grant him a good landing. Allah says, hey, wait, we are going to give you the blessed landing and shower you with our blessings. We want you to taste the peace, no more harm, etc, etc. So uh, it's a beautiful verse, verse number 48 of Surah Hud. As a result, Allah made Nuh alayhi salam a person who was filled with peace, tranquility, calmness. Those who were with him were the followers. They were convinced about Allah and about Allah's power and the promise of Allah. And Allah says, وَجَعَلْنَا ذُرِّيَّتَهُ هُمُ الْبَاقِينَ Verse number 77 of Surah Al-Safat. Allah says, and we made his offspring. We made his offspring, the offspring that remained. The rest of them became extinct. So Nuh alayhi salam was blessed in such a big way that those who were with him in the ark, none of them had children and offspring. He was the only one who had children and offspring. So by right, we are actually the family of the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. All the blessings that came thereafter were on and upon Nuh alayhi salatu was salam. Imagine... We're calling out to Allah. When Allah gives, He gives you much more than you've asked. So many things we have in our lives, my brothers and sisters, I want you to consider the following. So many things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us without us asking Him for them. We only ask for things we feel we really need. But so many things we need more desperately, but we feel we don't need them because we already have them. Who gave them to us? It was Allah. Do we thank Allah for all of that? Oh Allah, forgive our shortcomings. Forgive our short-sightedness. Forgive our sins. We have so many things. Take a look at the eyes, the nose. The, how many of us have made a dua? Oh Allah, help me breathe in a proper way. I, very few of us. Only when you have a breathing problem do you make that dua. Oh Allah, help me taste my food in a beautiful way. We don't make that dua because we taste it without, it, it's a given. But when you don't have it, you call out to Allah. So I want to end the session by saying, my brothers, my sisters, remember to thank Allah for what He has already bestowed upon you. Remember to thank Allah for that because without thinking and pondering deeply over the favors of Allah upon you, you are not going to be able to be thankful to Allah. How many of us say, oh Allah, give me a good sense of feeling, you know, the senses, my five senses that I have. Oh Allah, help me see correctly with proper eyesight. When you don't have a problem with your eyes, you don't call out to Allah. Oh Allah, help me chew my food, help me to digest, help me to do this, do that. No. So we need to learn this, my brothers and sisters. Nuh alayhi salatu was salam, what a beautiful lesson we learned today that we call out to Allah and we achieve so much more in return. So keep calling out to Allah, my brothers and sisters. Indeed, this is the way we will earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm really looking forward to seeing you again tomorrow with another lovely session uh, speaking about supplication, supplications from revelation and learning lessons therefrom. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really make us from amongst the favored. Uh, اقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته